Hey everyone, it is Tanya. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another speed build. Today I am building a fairly decent sized family home that is for a couple who has a teenager of their own but also fosters other kids. This is a foster home and I just thought it was a fantastic idea. I think I've done one of these in the past but I've had a ton of suggestions from y'all lately to go ahead and build a foster home so I thought I would do just that. Uh, so right now I'm just trying to figure out the exterior shape and come up with like a cute little suburban home. I am building in the world of Willow Creek, which is of course the base game world, uh, one of the three. <laughs> so uh, we're building on the Hollow Slow, Slow, I don't know how to pronounce the name of this lot to be honest, uh, but we're building on that lot and this ends up being a house with two dormers. It's a two-story home. The primary bedroom is on the bottom floor and then there are three bedrooms upstairs. And I was thinking that this household could hold one, two, three, four, five, six Sims because I was thinking there were two parents and then there is a teen room. So that's three. And then there are actually it could hold up to seven beds because I have a toddler room and then a kid slash teen room that are meant to be a little bit more generic as I assume there are kids coming and going in this home. So I just wanted them to be friendly, happy, but not like too overly personalized, unlike the teenager bedroom, which I uh, fully decorated for a specific personality. So anyway, right now <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the outside shape. This is pretty much it, but I do change the roofing on the dormers to be going the opposite way that it is going now because I didn't like how it looked. Uh, so we're just doing that here now, and I think this worked a lot better for the shape of this home. So just extending those pieces out and this is the point where I feel like it's starting to really come together and I'm really liking the shape and we're figuring out some windows. I primarily, maybe even exclusively, used windows from University Life, which I think is quite interesting. I think it comes out really, really cute in the end and then this little fence here is from Strangerville and this house ends up being bright yellow. <laughs> I really wanted it to be friendly but I didn't really know exactly what I wanted it to look like but as soon as I put down the yellow wallpaper it was over I needed it it needed to stay and I was really happy with that decision but before we get to that I'm just putting down some planter boxes and now we are trying that yellow wallpaper I thought about having like a white on the top or switching the bottom to something different and just having the upper floor in the yellow wallpaper but it's just so friendly and happy and that's the vibe I wanted with this house. I wanted it to be a positive experience and like a loving family. So that was the idea behind it. I just always think of yellow as such a cheerful color. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, if you do like this build, by the way, and you'd like to download it, it will be available on the Sims 4 gallery. You can find it under my EA ID, which is Griffey, G-R-Y-P-H-I. You could also find it under the hashtag Miss Griffey, and that information will also be in the description down below as well. Uh, so right here, I'm just making an exterior fireplace to add some interest to the side of the house. And uh, I just think it's a really realistic touch and I like to make those out of just like rooms. I don't often use the actual like chimney pieces that they give you in the game because I just don't think they look as nice. I like to have the structure on the side of a building. So that's what I did there. And then just playing around with the fencing outside and also getting a side entrance to this house. Uh, it helps break up the flat side of the house that I didn't do much with yet. And then uh, it's just another exit for your Sims to go ahead and use so you can get to different sides of the lot quicker. Uh, so just doing that and then adding a little bit of decoration to the front. I got these little pieces in the roof, which I think look so cute. And I was actually really, really proud of the outside of this house, not just like the structure of it, but the landscaping and stuff, I often struggle with what to do with backyards and this one feels a little bit more manicured and put together. There's like designated walk areas and patio space and I just really, really love how it came out. So uh, that should be coming here together shortly. I should be working on some of the pathways in a moment. But first I'm just placing down some flooring inside and some lights and stuff and then we'll be getting to the floor plan a little bit later. Uh, but for some reason, I decided to do this now. I just wanted to see it. It's easier for me to visualize it once the lights are in there. And actually, I figure I will address this now because I get asked this all of the time. Why I use the bigger lights, uh, the bigger saucer lights instead of the smaller saucer lights. 
and then scale them down later when we have the smaller ones. And the reason for that is actually because I like to place them down so I could feel like I can see what I'm doing while I'm drawing out a floor plan. But then the little ones, when I draw out a wall, they sometimes get stuck in the walls and then I have to delete walls trying to find where they were uh, because it messes with the lighting. So I just put the big ones down and then I either scale them down afterwards or I delete them and put the small ones afterwards. But I think it's easier to go ahead and put the big ones down to begin with so I don't have the frustration of losing them in a wall and then having to one by one destroy my floor plan until I find it. So that is why if you've ever been curious, I get comments about it a lot. So I figured I would address it. Uh, anyway, you can see I am still working on the landscaping here. It's super manicured. I love all of the shrubbery I have going on. I don't keep that blue flower. I liked the idea of it, but it wasn't fitting with the vibe of this house, if that makes sense. I feel like that would work better with like an overgrown landscaping situation. Uh, but for this house, I really wanted everything to be very clean and green. There's not a lot of flowers going on. It's mostly like shrubs and bushes. And I really like that. That's a style I much prefer. I think a lot of flowers can be very busy, but sometimes it's fun to do that sort of thing. So maybe I'll do some more of that sometime soon. The other thing I really want to do sometime soon, but I also am like afraid it's too early, is like a fall home, an autumn inspired home, because I am so ready for fall. It's September now. It starts this month. I'm already like decor shopping for Halloween. I don't like summer anyway, so I'm just, I am so ready for it. Uh, but I also am like, but what if I then want to do another one later on? Will it be too repetitive? I don't know. Let me know. Should, should we build a fall home on the channel, an autumnal home sometime soon? Because I think that would be so fun. Uh, those are some of my favorite builds to do. So do let me know. And of course, any other suggestions you have. I've been heavily relying on suggestions lately. Uh, and it's been so much fun. I just scroll through them whenever I'm in the mood to build. And that's where this house came from. And that's where the pet parent one I just posted came from. Uh, a bunch of the recent builds are directly from suggestions. And I've been having a blast with it. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you can probably tell I've been uploading more <laughs> recently. I'm just having so much fun building and uh, reading everyone's comments and getting to chat with y'all. So here we are inside starting to work on the floor plan and I thought about keeping in the whole process of the stairs, but I decided to take it out because um, <laughs> it was probably the most frustrating stair placement I have ever done. Um, it took an incredible amount of time that I, I don't even want to admit and I was ready to be like, okay, I did this whole house on the ex exterior. It's beautiful. I'm not going to furnish it. It's not going anywhere because I could not find a place for the stairs. They just didn't make sense anywhere for the upstairs to be utilized and it was making me very upset. Uh, but I got there in the end. It has a little bit of an awkward hallway through this house, but I feel like once it's furnished, it doesn't look awkward anymore. It just felt that way while I was decorating it, if that makes sense. Uh, but there is a hallway when you first walk in that goes from the front door to the back door. There's a little like dip to get to the bathroom and the primary bedroom downstairs. And there's some archways leading in to the kitchen and the dining room. And of course, when you walk right in, you are directly in the living room, which is where we are starting. And uh, this was also a process. I was like, you know what? I want to use a sectional. That makes sense for a big family. But for some reason, it just didn't fit the vibe. I didn't like the colors. It didn't feel the way I wanted it to feel. Uh, so all of this ends up going away. <laughs> and I do end up using the couches from Parenthood instead, which I believe I put together to make it look like they are a sectional sofa, even though they're not, uh, because it just fit the style a lot better. They have the cushions on them. They're really fun, friendly colors. And the sectionals we have for, with Dream Home Decorator, I love but I guess they don't look as like family friendly or cozy. There's no like big cushions and fluffy pillows, which is the sort of vibe I wanted to go for in this house. I definitely used a lot of Parenthood in here because of course it's it's the Parenthood game pack. I heavily, you know, uh, it, I'm, what is the word I'm looking for? I associate it heavily with like parenting and big families and all of that. It's very friendly and really nice stuff. Parenthood is definitely still one of my favorite game packs, if not my favorite. 
Uh, I also really like Dream Home Decorator, but I, I'm right now currently being like, this is why I didn't want to use Dream Home Decorator instead I used Parenthood. But uh, yeah, I do end up using a lot of that here by the door, though. I do have a book bag, a place to hang up your coats, as well as an umbrella rack, which is an item that I've been using a lot more often in my builds because for some reason, for a long time, I forgot it existed, but I like it because it's nice decor by the front door. And it's functional, so you can go ahead and pick what umbrella you want your Sims to use when it is raining out. That came with the Seasons pack, uh, and it's something I'm looking for in real life. For some reason, I can't seem to find an umbrella rack, like the, the container to put your umbrellas in anywhere that's not like $60. And I just, I don't know where I'm looking wrong. Where, where do you buy an umbrella holder? Does anyone know this information? If you do, please share it with me. I, I would love to know. I've been looking for one for years. And every once in a while, I'll be like, I'm just going to order one online. And then I look it up and it's way too expensive for what it is. So if there are any in-person stores in the United States that you can think of that uh, don't want an arm and a leg for a place to place umbrellas right inside of a front door, uh, I would love to know that information. But anyway, <laughs> that's completely off topic. Uh, we are working on the kitchen now and this came together pretty easily as well. I am using the counters from Cottage Living. And I believe the fridge and the stove are both from the Country Kitchen Kit. I think they're quite cute. I just thought that they were, you know, soft and friendly. And I didn't want to use Parenthood everywhere in this house as much as I feel like those would have worked beautifully in here. I thought that these were really cute as well and added a little bit more personality to the area. Uh, so I have the parenting board over here, which of course came with Parenthood. And you're able to set curfews and like leave little sticky notes and stuff for everyone. I think it's really cute. I think there's some photos as well, like your Sims can take pictures and put them up there or drawings or something. Uh, but it's a really nice item and of course, lots of gameplay associated with it. I remember being super excited about that when they first added uh, that to the game. Parenthood was just a really exciting one in general because we were like, this is sort of like Generations. Oh my goodness. Uh, I still want some more aspects of Generations. We did get some more of them with high school years, but I feel like there's still a lot more to explore, but it does feel like we're sort of going with each generation instead of getting a Generations pack. So uh, we got teenage stuff. We've been getting more kids stuff lately. I feel like we need an Elders pack because I don't think at this point we're going to get a Generations pack, or if we do, I don't know what would be included in it. That'd be really cool though. But uh, I kind of anticipate there being like an elders related pack. That'd be so fun. There's so many fun things you can include with that. Uh, you could even combine it with like a hobbies pack. Oh, I would love that. Hobbies in The Sims 4. Please give it to me. I have no idea what to expect for like content for the rest of the year. I know we're getting another kit in two weeks. Uh, the Desert Lux kit. And I'm really excited about that. I'm definitely going to be doing some builds with that new kit. But outside of that, I have no idea what to expect for the rest of this year. I don't, I don't know. Do you think we're going to get another expansion this year? I have no clue on that. I feel like it's 50-50. I wouldn't be surprised either way, but I would love another one, but I'm not like getting my high, my hopes up. Uh, I almost said my high hopes, my hopes high on that. Uh, so I guess that could go either way. And I don't think we're getting another game pack. So that, I guess that just leaves kits. Oh, goodness. I don't know. What would you like to see for the rest of the year in The Sims 4? Do let me know. Let's have a discussion down below. But anyway, this is the dining room space. It's very green. I actually used a lot of fun colored wallpapers throughout this home. I wanted it to be very colorful and cheerful. And uh, it's something I don't do as often in builds, especially family homes, having such bright colors. And I feel like it's going back to my roots a little bit uh, where I, when I first got The Sims 4, oh my gosh, all of the walls were like green and purple. I don't know why, but <laughs> they were. Those were the colors I chose and like more vibrant versions than the ones I end up using in this build. But I did use green walls and purple walls in this build, uh, which is quite exciting. And I also made sure to add a toddler chair in here and I wanted to have stuff to make sure your toddlers had everything they needed. Although I think I forgot to put a toddler potty in this house. So you might want to add that if you do play with this house and have toddlers, but luckily that's a small item. It's easy to just quickly add in if you need it. Uh, but I think I have everything else. There's a tub for them to bathe in. We, of course, have the high chair, which isn't necessary, but like it's cute, but it's frustrating, if you know what I mean. Uh, if you've ever played with toddlers and tried to put them in a high chair, it's, 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 it's a disaster. It's not fun. Uh, anyway, this is the downstairs bathroom that is going to be like the 
primary bedroom bathroom, but also like the main floor bathroom. It's got a standing shower sink. This I believe is the one that I paint purple, which is really fun. I think it's quite vibrant uh, and cheerful and I like it. I don't know. My, my first floor bathroom when I was growing up, it was very small. It didn't have a shower. It's just a half bath, but it was like a lavender color. And I'm like, huh, that's a fun color for a bedroom or for a bathroom. And then my grandmother's bathroom growing up was like peach colored, sort of. It's like a brightish orange. So I don't know. I like colorful bathrooms. I just don't do them very often. And I tend to always want to put tiles on all the walls. But with the exception of my grandmother's peach bathroom that had black and white tile like halfway up the wall, I've never had a bathroom that had tile anywhere other than the shower. So I don't know why I always do that in the same. It's kind of interesting. Kind of like I always put wood floors in my houses, but all of the places I've ever lived have carpeting, like wall to wall carpeting. Anyway, <laughs> this is the primary bedroom. It's blue and green and like very calming. I love how this room came out. Oh my gosh, those curtains with the blue walls. Something about that made me so happy. This is of course the parents' bedroom and I just wanted it to be a calming, like clean, organized space. Uh, I assume they're pretty busy if they're constantly fostering kids and they also have a teen of their own. And I just think they're very lovely, wonderful people. And I just wanted them to have a really cute space. I love how this room came out. It's, it's really simple. There's not like a lot in it, but something about the orientation of the room and those curtains, it just made me really happy. So anyway, moving on upstairs now to work on the kids' bedrooms, starting here in the teenager's room. I was thinking they were really into sports in the color purple, obviously inspired by this bedspread from high school years that I haven't used yet. I really love this bed though. I just haven't used this particular bedspread, but I thought it was so pretty. It's like purple, pink, black, and blue with somebody playing basketball on it. So I paired that with some other like sports related posters and decor. We have some trophies that I'm about to hang up above the bed from kids room stuff. And I just thought it was a fun room. I wanted it to be very like themed on what this particular teen was interested in since I wanted to keep the other rooms more like simplistic and having like a variety of personalities that could fit in them. This one I wanted to go all out with a theme and one that I haven't done in a while. And, you know, of course, using a bedspread that I haven't used yet from high school years. There are so many beds with that pack. We got 10 new beds. I know some of them are single beds and some are uh, full size beds and they're like only five different designs, but that's still 10 new beds. Uh, so I just put some clutter in here and lots of sports balls. We have a couple of basketballs and I believe I put a football in there as well. Uh, but moving on into the toddler bedroom, I was inspired by the color scheme of this particular wallpaper. At first I thought I was going to use these yellow beds, but I did get rid of those in the end and I used uh, different toddler beds. But I just wanted it to be cheerful, happy, simple, and, uh, you know, good for a toddler. Uh, toddlers aren't usually picking out their decor at that point, and I just wanted it to be, you know, a simple space that uh, they could go ahead and grow in and have a little place to sleep. There's a couple of toys in here, I believe, as well. And that little bunny wall decor piece from Eco Lifestyle is so cute. I love using that. I often forget it exists, but I thought it worked nicely with this room because the wallpaper has bunnies on it. So I had to go ahead and grab that. And then we put a blurfy between the beds and I get a couple of decor pieces over on the wall, some more bunnies and a height chart, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, and that little pillow from the little campers kit, which is really cute. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this room. Like there's not a whole lot in here. I don't feel like there needs to be a lot in here. Like I said, the one thing that I did forget was toddler potties. So this would probably be a good room to put them in. I'm not really sure where else I would put them, but easy thing to add. I might even add them before I upload this to the gallery if I remember, but this is the child slash teen room. It's just got two beds in it. You could probably fit more than two, but I didn't want it to feel too cramped. And it's a weird shaped room, but I thought that the nooks on either side where the like bay windows are, um, although I, would you call them bay windows then? The dormers? Yeah, there you go. Where the dormers are worked as like a nice wardrobe space and a nice place for a dollhouse as well. Uh, it kind of filled out the space perfectly. <laughs> so I did that. I also, you probably saw I grabbed the play tent from Dream Home Decorator and threw that in the backyard. I thought that that could be a fun activity outside for The Sims. I also decided to add that like inspirational poster of like a, a bear like hugging its young. For some reason that felt like the right thing to put in this space. This one is supposed to be uh, a very simple neutral room. I know it's, you know, blue and yellow, but I don't mean neutral as in colors. I mean, as in like not overly stylized for a specific personality. So 
We have a couple of toys here and there, but overall I thought it was a pretty generic, could be for anyone room. But anyway, back outside now, we are working on the backyard. I have the play tent I had placed down already. We have a couple of planters, a barbecue, a big table and chairs, a swing set, just a couple of activities out here for your Sims to enjoy. And, and of course get a trash can and all of that. Oh yeah, and the toddler pool. I think this is such a cute item. Seasons has some adorable things in it. And I like that your Sims that are older than toddlers can just like relax in that pool as well. It's a really cute detail. Uh, but yeah, just adding some lighting to the exterior of this build and then we'll be heading on into screenshots. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. You can also subscribe to the channel if you have not already and click that bell to be notified when I upload. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone.